Hello, if you are here, I'm hoping it's because you already watched the How to Ballet Lines video. So lines is what the body is doing, rotation is how we keep it there. So rotation is a circular movement, you can think of a spinning wheel, and it is a big part of how we turn out in ballet, and on de or is a form of rotation that we need to talk about. So you've heard teachers say on de or open the door, but what does that mean? It means the rotation is outward and away from our center or our axis. So if you think of an on de or pirouette and our supporting leg is the axis, we're turning away from that standing leg. But our center and our axis is through the center of our body, so our legs, our thighs are constantly rotating outwards and away from our center. I did try to use masking tape again to demonstrate the thighs rotating in an on de or motion, but the tape did not stick to my sweaty tights. I'll see if I can add some arrows when I'm editing, but I gave up with the tape for now. So unfortunately, a lot of the times we're trained to think of just the tops of the thighs rotating outwards, but it's continuous. It actually comes all the way around full circle, and it feels like the backs of your thighs are reaching through underneath your tush and reaching forward. So it's not just about squeezing the butt, even though a lot of teachers say squeeze your butt or tuck your butt, those things don't necessarily make you turn out more. You have to find that on de or rotation first and then engage your glutes to keep it there. And rotation does not start and stop in the thigh. It also happens a little bit in the calf. Now this is a very small and difficult movement, but we usually achieve this by imagining the thigh muscles continuously rotating so much that they lift the kneecap. And as a result, the inside or the back of your knee feels like it's reaching forward and the calf will start to reach forward as well. This will trickle down all the way to your feet. I bet you didn't think your feet rotate, but they do, sort of. I mean, I don't want you to actually roll your ankles backwards because then you'll sprain your ankles, but it does feel like a lift. The bottoms of your arches will lift when you're rotating this intensely through your calves and your thighs. You can see the difference in my feet between a lifted arch and a flat, relaxed arch. When we relax, our tush goes backwards, our knees roll forward, and our feet can roll forward. Now, I know these things don't seem really important, but remember ballet is all about a nice vertical line. So when we rotate and engage these muscles, we make a much straighter leg line. Look at the difference. Without rotation, my legs are more of like a soft S rather than a straight up and down line. So we talked about the lateral rotation of the legs, but did you know there's actually a vertical rotation of the legs? This is where it gets a little tricky because that same lift that you were feeling from the bottom of your arch and that same lift you were feeling of your calf and your knee lifting up and reaching forward, the fronts of your thighs are also reaching up, but you also have a feeling of pressing down in the backs of your legs. The same way we keep our tail down, the same way we want to feel our our pinky toes on the floor. So when we combine this lifting up in front and pressing down in back feeling with the lateral rotation feeling, this is where we get that magical spiral feeling that a lot of teachers love to talk about. So lifting up underneath the arch, the calf muscle reaching forward, the muscles around the knees lifting up and around to rotate outwards the quad lifting up and rotating out to the side but connecting to the back of the thigh which is now reaching forward under you and all the way up into that hip into that rotator the actual femur ball and socket joint is rotating as well and did you know that this same rotation feeling also is up in the torso? Think about it. We need to keep our ribs in or else they would splay out and we would ruin that vertical line. How do we keep our ribs in? Well, I'm about to show you. We lift up in front just as we do in our legs, but we actually have an on de don feeling in the rib cage, which is the opposite of on de or. It comes from the outside and in towards the center, towards the axis. So imagine if you're doing an on de don pirouette, you are turning in towards the same direction of your axis or your supporting leg. So your ribs have to come in so that they stay together because lifting up naturally makes you want to splay your ribcage out, but then we lose verticality. The ribcage has to come in on de don feeling so that we stay vertical. 
And we have that same opposition on the back side of the body, just as we did in our legs. We have a pressing down feeling in the back of the body. So it really is a full body rotation motion of lifting up in front and pressing down in the back. This would be a good time to insert some arrows. So you always hear teachers say shoulders down, but it's not just those top shoulder muscles. It's the shoulder blades going all the way down and the tail pressing down. We also actually don't want to pinch our shoulder blades together because if we pinch our shoulders backwards, it will splay our rib cage out. So I actually tell students to imagine a wide feeling in the backs of their shoulder blades, and that helps keep the rib cage going in towards the center and that ande don feeling. So if you refer back to the lines video, and I talk about how we're constantly on this cross and obeying these rules about keeping long straight lines and keeping these positions, you can see how this active constant rotation is our guide to keeping our body within these positions, within these special planes of movement that we're allowed to go. But wait, we left out one tiny important detail, your arms. Did you know your arms are actually rotating too? When you put out your arm, you instinctively naturally have a resting, dropping elbow. We have to correct that, and we do that by an ande don feeling with our bicep. We are literally rotating our bicep into our body. But then look, we got a droopy wrist, so how do we fix that? We gotta fix it with an ande or feeling in the forearm. Rotate in on top to lift the elbow and rotate out on bottom to lift the wrist. Okay, I think we covered pretty much all the basic areas of rotation. When you think about it, the torso is actually moving in the opposite way that the legs are. The torso is in in front and out and wide in the back. Meanwhile, the legs are out in front and rotating in through the back sides. So the cross is what does my body have to do, what positions, where does it go, and the rotation is how. How do I squeeze my limbs into these positions? So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps. This is one of the reasons I get very salty when I hear dancers of other genres complain that ballet is boring because it is too limiting. When I hear dancers say, oh, ballet is so restrictive, I feel so confined, it's so boring, I can't go beyond these rules and positions, that is so false. The moment that you tell yourself ballet is limiting, you have lost all hope and all chances of becoming a ballet dancer. You have lost all hope of gaining any sense of artistry within ballet. Even though this was a very mechanical video, showing you just the physical mechanics of the anatomy of the body, the fact that ballet has no limit, right? When we're doing ballet and we're rotating these muscles, the rotation has to be constant, right? You don't just lock it and call it a day. You don't just like hit your position and be done with it, right? In ballet, you are always striving for more and more and more. There really is no limit to how much more you can push and how much more you can squeeze out. And I believe that this is why ballet dancers specifically look so ethereal. This is why ballet dancers have this like little unspeakable, undescribable quality about their movement. I believe this is one of the reasons that ballet is still around. It has stood the test of time. People keep coming back for that little bit of magic that they can't get from any other art form, from any other athletic or form of sports. Accomplished and professional ballet dancers, true ballerinas who have internalized this feeling, they appear to be f from somewhere in the beyond or, or something from beyond is coming out through them. And that is because they are going beyond within their body. Like, yes, you can just stick your arm out in a position, but you should be constantly feeling that rotation, constantly feeling the opposition, constantly feeling those cycles of energy. It's continuous, it doesn't stop. You don't just pop your leg out in a tondu and say, okay, done. No, constantly 
pushing the limits, constantly squeezing, constantly, you, you are wrestling within yourself and somewhere along the way you squeeze, you extract a little bit of your soul and it comes out. I don't think there's any other physical activity or art form or anything that even comes close to this. And while I truly believe everybody should have access to ballet, everybody deserves access to correct training and correct technique just for their own health, and just to stay true to the classical art form, it is also simultaneously true that not everybody is cut out for it. Like, when you want to be a ballet dancer, when you want to be a ballerina, you are signing yourself up for a lifetime of endless work. The work is never done. You are never done. You will hear professional ballet dancers say this. You're never done with the work. You can always do better. You can always push more. You can always lift higher. You can always rotate more. You can always be longer. It is never done. It is never stopped. It is never locked in place. It is always growing within. And I believe that that is one of the things that makes a true ballerina, when, when you are doing that internal work, even if it seems very mechanical, it does squeeze some special undocumented type of energy out of the body. Like this is one of the things that makes it so special. And I feel like we take it for, for granted. We're so used to hearing teachers say, oh, turn out, turn out, rotate. But like, it, it's not just one and done, it's continuous. And it's these patterns of movement, it's these pathways of energy, it's these continuous pushing and lifting and pulling and counterbalancing and, and complementary and even opposing forces, you know, twisting the body in such strange ways. It is when you lean into that, it is when you go beyond, but within these boundaries, within these parameters, that is what makes it so special. And this is the hill that I'm ready to die on. I'm prepared to do a whole masterclass about this. I'm kind of pissed off that masterclass hasn't reached out to me to do one of those fancy little like online series things. I probably don't have enough followers. I don't know. I'm not famous enough. Well, anyway, I hope that demystified the concept of rotation for you. And stay tuned because the last episode, or what I think will be the last episode of this mini series, is the act of putting it all together with connection and coordination. Don't know how I'm gonna use the masking tape for that one, um, but thank you so much and stay salty.